Now, before anybody asks, no, you cannot boop the snoots of the various Leviathans. Trust me, we have tried extensively. Welcome gamers to our Simply Honest Game Review. I am your host, Nico Silverado, and if you're like me, you're a really big fan of space, you love the ocean, but you're also afraid of the ocean, and you've heard this game is pretty dang cool. Well, my goal here today is to give you a simple yet honest review of this fantastic game and give you some of my personal opinions and things I've took away from this game. But without further ado, let's dive into the review for Subnautica. Sunlight. I've been dreaming of it for months. But it's hard to enjoy alone. The crash seems so long ago now. father was right. We shouldn't have gone so deep. They do not want us down there. Despite my best efforts, ill health is taking hold of me. Marguerite and father are already part of this incredible planet. It's reassuring to know that when I go, I'll join them. Until then, well, there's always the view. Now, before we dive right into the review of the game itself, I would like to take a moment to give you all a little bit of personal context in regards to what I know about the series and my prior knowledge before we officially get into the review. I have personally played Subnautica and Subnautica Below Zero a fair number of times prior to this review in regards to just personal fun games. I've played Subnautica since the beta during the day one launches, and I have seen a lot of major changes from beta build to current build. A lot of times when I think about Subnautica itself, I remember back in the times when I used to consider this game Minecraft, but underwater and scarier. And depending on who you are, of course, this could either ring very true or this could probably be some little along the lines of a over exaggeration. In terms of my experience with this game, I have played this game quite a lot, both in regards to playing with Reckless Abandon and as of recently playing this game with a little bit more of a reviewer's mindset. And my intention today is to give you both perspectives in order to give you guys a fair and moderately educated guess and understanding of what this game is and whether or not it's worth it for you to buy. Made back in 2018, Subnautica is a first-person survival crafting game created by the indie studio known as Unknown World Entertainment. Many of you who have most likely seen various clips always can picture Subnautica as that game that has beautiful stellar oceans, vibrant colors, and absolutely bone-chilling roars and leviathans that have known to eat many of your favorite content creators, causing them to have PTSDs never to touch water again. But the story itself is moderately simple, as you are a lone survivor of a crashed ship known as the Aurora, where you have been stuck on a large alien planet with various creatures, biomes, and really cool technologies that have really shaped the game into something that can be very immersive, enjoyable, and showing the quality of the game that it has become over the course of the few years during its initial beta launch. One of the most common things that you as gamers will most likely play and find out when you get into Subnautica itself is that the overall game design is, in my opinion, absolutely breathtaking. This, of course, has changed drastically ever since the days of the beta in terms of the design of the various items, objects, colors, and throughout the years of this game, Subnautica has done a lot of really fun and, in my opinion, very reasonable adjustments that have made the game better and better with each passing time. And one of the biggest things that you'll find within the game's design that is really amazing is to me, the music. The music in Subnautica is probably one of the most fantastic, well-designed aspects because the music and sound design is something that really sells the game's beauty and the game's ability to really put the players in the situations. For example, while you're driving through the realms of the oceans, you'll have relatively nice, cheery music as you're driving through the shallows, finding resources and such. 
But then as you proceed to dive deeper and deeper into the game, the music tends to change and you get into some regions such as the blood kelp biomes where suddenly you're finding yourself surrounded by endless voids of dark, large blood stalks out of everywhere. And every so often you'll see a Leviathan kind of creeping off into the distance with their various roars echoing through the entireties of the void. To me, one of the biggest things that Subnautica has done really well, not only in regards to the general gameplay, is the psychological aspect of using the music and the sounds to really give the game that very, very well rendered and well created product. Throughout the course of the game's design itself, you'll find that the game is very user friendly for both casual players who don't play many video games and of course those of you who like to go cowabunga hell yeah into the various darknesses of the void. The game allows you to really tackle the game at your own pace. The design of how the quest lines work and the design of how the progression system works in terms of start to end game is really player paced. You're allowed to discover whatever it is that you can. And if you're feeling brave enough, you can try to progress to the next region and work your way farther and farther into the various biomes that the game has. Throughout the course of the design of the game, you have, of course, the various fun implications of the base building, the various incentives in order to explore. The game really allows you to take the game in parts, in pieces. It allows you to, in, in many cases, really choose if whether or not do you want to build a basic base or do you want to go dive deep and try to build the more extravagant pieces. The incentivization of the game to explore and find other things is what really drives the game to be very motivating for newer players, especially. Like I said earlier, one of the biggest things that I love with this game's overall design is the psychological aspect of how the music, the sound, and how the design of the, even the creatures can play into the players' minds to trick them and to instill a sense of fear. Now, for any of you who happen to be playing this game for the very first time, or quite frankly, has never even heard of this game, I want you all to take a moment to understand the sheer level of growth that Subnautica has experienced over the course of its many years of being out. Ever since the beta, you have to understand that Subnautica did not start off as a completed full story style game. I remember back in the earlier day one times of Subnautica, it felt like you were playing a really fancy swimming simulator. Back when you used to roam around the various parts of the ocean, you just had the opportunity to swim around, touch the creatures, and have a moderately very chill, relaxing time in the ocean. And eventually as the game released more and more patches and releases, they eventually start releasing the various creatures, the predators, and even eventually the leviathans. And to me, one of the things that was quite surprising back when the game was in development was the inclusion of an actual story and an actual quest line that really made the game, to me, become so much more appealing. As a person that's very objective based and a very task oriented mindset, the inclusion of the actual quest line really gave me a lot of excitement in regards to the fact that Subnautica initially at first had a very A to B style story where you as the survivor crashed on a planet, you survived, and now your goal is to get the hell out. The inclusion of the actual quest line really allowed you to do more than just an A to B situation. The inclusion of lore, the inclusion of audio and other pieces and parts and structure discovery allowed you to really create so much more depth within the game and Subnautica from beta to today has really changed drastically in a very positive manner for me. With the game itself having a very overall simplistic gameplay, as I mentioned previously, this game has the ability to be usable and appealing to virtually anybody. Many of you have most likely seen various TikToks of larger content creators playing the game where they are scared out of their minds trying to go into a dark segment of the ocean, but they hear one scary roar and everything pauses. Versus you have individuals who like to go around the game and simply make the most complex, highly orchestrated base structure on the planet. It really allows any gamer to just genuinely immerse himself into the game. And that's something that I found is very wonderful about the overall design of the game in terms of quality of the graphics. Of course, one of the biggest things that I absolutely adore with the Subnautica community is the overall mod potential and the mod community. 
And of course, if you do have an intention of playing this game for the very first time, I would highly recommend playing the game without any mods, mainly just because the game itself without mods has a lot of very powerful and very efficient design choices that really can appeal to the gamers. And then of course, once you're done being scared out your mind, play all the various mods you would like and really see the potential that this game has created over the course of its time. Now, overall, in regards to the general story of the game, for anyone who's trying to figure out whether or not the game is more of a Minecraft thing where you just aimlessly run around and collect stuff, or if it's like an actual story that you can follow and inter interpret properly and really take parts and pieces like a giant puzzle. I would say in regards to the story itself, this story with the first Subnautica is a very nice story that you can put puzzles and pieces in order to kind of assemble the narrative, as you would see. Overall, Subnautica focuses mostly on the player's ability to explore, create various structures, vehicles, and allows them to really take the opportunity to explore the world in its entirety. Having eventually created a full quest line within the game, Subnautica has given a lot of freedom to the players, especially. Many of the monsters deep within the game gave me personally a sense of fear, especially those goddamn squid crab things. To me, as a person who loves game design and art, the overall variety of the monsters creations and the monster design really lets me enjoy all the various design choices this game has. Really, the game does a very good job in regards to providing subtle hints, allowing you to get to the next objective without giving you an unnecessary time crunch that would unfortunately pace the player to have to make rash decisions or even in honesty, just, you know, blaze through the game and miss crucial parts and pieces. Now, in regards to my final thoughts in regards to Subnautica, I just want to mention that, in my opinion, this game is fantastic. It's fun, it's entertaining, it's a peace, in my opinion, moderately peaceful. And despite having the occasional fear-inducing moments with all the, with all the Leviathans, the deep dark void of, of the ocean itself, I believe this is a very fantastic game. Overall, I feel like to this day, Subnautica should be classified as a well-rounded, completed game and a very fantastic end product. You can tell that the developers took a lot of time, a lot of advice from the, the community, and they have really taken a lot of time to really develop the game in a positive way ever since the times of the beta. And you can see that even with their future projects, that they have been listening to the wants and the desires of the community and have really worked to make this series iconic and almost a, even a timeless classic. Personally, I believe this game overall, with everything that I have mentioned in the review, is very well suited for gamers of every age, style, whether you're looking for an indie game to appreciate or if you're looking for something to really just be different than your usual everyday gameplay. Subnautica itself gives you a large degree of freedom in regards to crafting, the base building, the exploration. O overall, a moderately limitless level of replayability and just coasting and vibing inside the game itself. Now, before we officially sign off here today, I just want to thank you guys all so much for being a part of today's game review. If you guys did enjoy today's video, consider liking, subscribing, and let us know how you felt about the, the review in the comments today. But of course, if you happen to have a game that you think we should do a, a gameplay of and review on, let me know down in the comments and I'll do the best that I can to add that to our upcoming list. But as always, I have been your host, Nico Silverado. Thank you for attending my game review. And as always, we'll see you all on the next video.